What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, episode number 60, ladies. Oh, boy. The golden age, baby. Golden age? Are we in our golden years? Are golden we silver years? foxes? Is it 60s? I feel like years? 60s is too young to be golden years. There, isn't there a 70s, decade called maybe? that? It might be 70s. I don't actually I know. I don't know. I just know silver foxes, aka Garrett Olivia. I mean, he's yeah, but real can, old. He's not. But you can be silver foxes when you're younger. My grandfather turned completely white haired at like so 20. So silver fox isn't tied to age. It's no. just anyone with silver hair. That uh, is a fox, yeah. I mean, uh, okay. I think traditionally it is meant to describe an older gentleman, yes. yes True. Yes. But at this point, at this day and age... <laughs> You can have silver hair anytime. Well, you know, ladies and, and it's gentlemen. socially acceptable. In true form, off to a tangent, right out the <laughs> gate. Uh, this is, of course, What's Good Games, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff. We appreciate you guys joining us here each and every week, of course. If you listened last week, you know that we're doing a special episode because this week we celebrated Independence Day here in the United States. I hope you ate some hot dogs, maybe mm -hmm. saw some fireworks, maybe you got some sunshine in your life. Or maybe you played video games all day. Or anyway, maybe you were in a different celebrate. part of the world and you didn't celebrate this holiday. That's true, probably for a for portion of majority our audience. Of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly for Carl down there in New Zealand. And yeah. Benjamin Pardew. Oi, mate. That's Australia. Wait, could you? Do I that like one how more time? your Australian oi, and mate. English are like very similar. Just we, there's a all lot of oi's happening. Are, all of my accents have blended into one accent. This is what the future is going to hold, ladies and gentlemen. Every other country in the world will be known as oi. Oi! Yeah, sorry about that. I'm stupid, ignorant American over here. I'm just going to let that one go. Um, we hope that you guys are ready for your game of the year so far. So we did this last year on uh, the same holiday week because it's falling in the middle of the week when we would normally shoot the show. And, um, you know, we want to take a little bit of time off, but we also want to make sure that you get some amazing podcast goodness. Thank you. You're gonna, you were about to play was, defense on the water about bottle. To, I, was, I was, yeah, I was, I got you. It's a nice let me koozie. Just, let me just drink some of it. Look at that. What's good game koozie? It's very purple. Also koozie, such a weird word. Um, We might be, um, no, strike that. We will be giving away the koozies we have left over from PAX East at PAX West at the end of the month. Did you know the mm -hmm. tickets are now on sale? At the end of the month? No, that's not correct. It's the end of August. It's the end yeah. of a month. It's the end of a month. It's not the end of the mm -hmm. month the that end this, of this podcast month. is going up. <laughs> Jeez, you always got to correct me, well, Steimer. I don't want people to be like, wait a minute, did they move PAX to July? What's oh, happening? No, don't do that. Um, but before we get into our discussion of Game of the Year so far, uh, two things. First, I want to make a disclaimer that we're going to do our best to keep it as spoiler-free as possible. Oof. But... Mm. We might talk about some light story spoilers. Nothing too crazy. No, like, major character deaths or plot twists or anything like that. But everyone dies. Um, just, mm. just so you have, you know, your trigger fingers ready on the fast forward button on whatever podcast app or the YouTube uh, app if you're using that. Um, don't forget, you can, of course, always watch the show and see the three of us in person in San Francisco at youtube.com slash what's good games. And the second thing I want to let you guys know is that this episode of what's good games is brought to you completely free courtesy of our sponsor quip. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about these amazing toothbrushes uh, a couple weeks ago and now both Brittany and Steimer have been using this amazing electric toothbrush. So for those of you out there who aren't familiar, let me paint a little picture for you. Sometimes when you walk down the toothbrush aisle at the store, it doesn't take long to realize that there are lots of options and many of them are gimmicks. Man, there are a ton of toothbrushes in that aisle these days. But the truth is you really just need something that guides the simple habits most of us get wrong when brushing our teeth and Quip knows that. So think about your everyday brushing. Your teeth probably isn't, you know, the top of your mind when you're going about your day. But for something that's so important to your health, it should be. That's right. Take care of your teeth. And that's why Quip wants to help you brush better. And the number one thing people do wrong about brushing their teeth? It's time where they brush too hard. Uh, yep. Get those bloody gums. Not good. No. Be nice to your gums because otherwise they recede like minded and you have to have this horrifying surgery like I did and it wasn't fun. Take that as a warning, kids. And Quip is here to help. So, Brittany. Yes. Have you been using your Quip? I have. And it makes me feel like I'm living in the future. Just it's got those it's little silver. like silicone bristles on the outside. It has that. It has, Super you know, soft. a little it's for your fancy dandy tongue. mount for the mirror. 
You know, you only have to use a pea-sized amount of the paste. You don't need the inches of paste. <laughs> inches and it's wonderful. Paste. And I like it. And it's gentle. It's very gentle. Is what it I'll is say. very, very soft, which is I have. I already know I'm going to have to go back for more gum surgery. I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, no. Oh, um, no. I've known this for a long time. <laughs> this has been a long time coming. But I will say the quip is much more gentle on that that poor little baby tooth that's it's missing some gums. <laughs> Well, that is good to hear that it's nice and gentle. And don't forget, it also does not require a charger or wires. That means it's compact and light to make brushing twice a day super easy, both at home and on the go, like when you're here visiting me in the Bay Area. Um, if you guys are interested in trying out Quip, so we have a deal just for you. It starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash what's good right now, you'll get your first refill pack for free with your Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash what's good. That's G-E-T-Q-I-P dot com slash what's good. And what's great about Quip is that they will send you your refills every three months. So that way you always know when it's time. And some of you might out there think, well, what if I don't need it every three months? Well, you should be you brushing do. your teeth twice a day. And that means exactly every three months you should need your refill. Yeah. Did you know that 75% of us don't refresh our bristles? That's gross. Every three months? That's gross. Let alone visit the dentist every six. Take that's care of your toothies. That's more I'm understandable. Gui I'm, gui I'm guilty <laughs> of that. More, I'm guilty of that yeah. uh, for sure. <laughs> um, but Quip is here to help. Again, one more time. Get Quip.com slash what's good to get your free refill pack. All right, ladies. On to... Normally, I would say the news here, uh, out of muscle memory, I almost did. But on to game of the year so far. Ooh, so it's been ooh. a really interesting year this year. I feel like when we did this last year. I feel like there was more last year. There were, uh, it did felt, feel mm -hmm. like there were like more AAA contenders. Yeah. And this year feels like it's reversed. There are more indie contenders this year. That's true. Because the only AAA I, that truly stands out to me is, of course, God of War. Mm -hmm. Not Monster Hunter World? I didn't get to play most of Monster Hunter World. Why not? Oh, that's because right. remember the Xbox kept crashing. Oh yeah. Didn't I tell you to start over on PS4? You may have told me to do it, but I didn't. Oh, <gasps> that sounds right. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I think the second half of twenty eighteen looks really promising. I'm just looking through some of the games right now. Obviously like Octopath Traveler, for me, JRPG fanatic, that'll be up there. Spider Man, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, obviously Red Dead. So yeah, but this first half it's kinda like well, yeah, it's God of War is light. like the only main triple A like well, I mean but not that I think they're comparable, really, but I think Detroit was also like a really, you know, nice experience. I definitely think Detroit's a contender in specific categories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So should we just go month by month and see what we uh, see what we've got? Or sure. I have categories. Oh, you do oh, you that I've do? played the okay. games that I've played in categories RPGs, RPGs in general. Anyone besides what me? Have you played any RPGs of 2018? 2018? I don't think so. List of what you've played. I have played Nino Kuni two. Nope. West of Lowe's. Because I was trying to finish Persona. Okay. So Nino Kuni 2, West of Loathing, and Kingdom Come Deliverance. I'm also playing a game right now called Battle Chasers Nightware on the Switch. But this is where it gets a little tricky because of all a lot of the games I've played this year have been on the Switch, but they all have been ports of games that have come out years prior. Uh, so you can't count those. Technically. You can and you can't. Mm, you can and you it's can't. It's a little boat. It's a little, I can't remember. It's a little we, hairy. I yeah. feel like we had a rule for this last year and I've already forgotten what it was. I don't remember if we counted those or not. Right, like Night in the Woods came out February 2017, but it came to Switch February 2018. I played that last year. Well, technically, if you look at Persona, Persona 5 was a Western port. Well, that's doing it a disservice. It wasn't, port is not the right word. It was released in the West for the first time in April, but it came out in Japan in 2016. But it was still considered Game of the Year um, Yeah, but eligible. that was the first release of it here, though. But it had already been released in another territory. Yeah, but another territory, what are you going to do? So what I'm saying Learn is Japanese? like, if, if we're going to allow that, then we should allow it on another platform. No, I feel like those are two very different things. Okay. That if, like, I feel like, so for if, instance, you're in if the camp, Persona... So you're in the camp of no... I'm, I'm in the camp of it's an old game. No releases yeah. on platforms, new platforms. Correct. Because my if if even if Persona was like, it released on Switch today... I would be like, it's still a game that released last yeah, year. Yeah, but what about a game like Divinity Original t or Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition where they revamped a whole section of the game and added an additional 40 hours of content on a new platform? I think those things are a case-by-case -case basis. That one, because they've so added... So now you're so changing your story. So no, I'm not, because I they've just, added 40 hours. I don't think they're adding 40 hours of content. I think oh. what they did is they took the final act of the game, right. which is about 40 hours, 
and they've added and changed a few things, but they're not adding 40 hours. Okay. They've content. certainly revamped enough content that they tried to be in contention for Game Critics Awards. So, and if they're eligible for that, that means that technically they're eligible for... Mm-hmm. Sure. For awards for this year. So we need to, like, make a decision okay. is what I'm trying to say. No, no, that's Ladies fair. and gentlemen, I know that you're probably as conflicted as we are. So what I would say, maybe, is if a game came out on PC a couple years ago, but it just came to console this year, can we count that? Yes. I think we universally have to make a blanket statement. We, we either allow all games coming to new platforms or we allow none. We can't do case by case. But they're diff- like, I think a definitive edition is a different thing than it being ported over to something else. Like if a Div- Divinity Original Sin was like, but it is coming to a new platform. It's coming to correct. PS4 and Xbox One. It was never there before. But like West of Loathing that you're playing, if it was on PC, but it's the exact same game, that's a little bit different. They didn't do any like the extra development was just making it run on the Switch. It wasn't content changing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they added any content for the Switch. I don't know, but okay, okay. Anyways, I so, honestly don't really that care said, much either way. The but. only RPGs. <laughs> That have been can- that came out 2018. I played of Nino Kuni 2 and Kingdom Come Deliverance. Would you consider Far Cry a hybrid RPG? I didn't nah. know what to put that in. I put that in action adventure. Yeah, I would say that. But more. there's no puzzle solving really in that. It's more of like a first. It's more person just a first person shooter. shooter. Open, open world first person shooter. Yeah, but like, there's like I a didn't... lot of there's a lot of skill tree shit in there. Though. There is though. Yeah, yeah. but like, like the yeah. perk system, uh. it can float between categories. It won't win in any of them. I feel like so. <laughs> I feel I like really so love it when Brittany games. like throws a little shade because it's so unusual. <laughs> it's... I love everyone. I appreciate. Listen, Simon, I appreciate what Far Cry Five did. It like, was good. Just wasn't what I like. It. Great, great. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So I like those off to a bombs. rousing start, everybody. Off to <laughs> a rousing start. This is what we do. This is going okay, great. So Kingdom Come Deliverance for me. So RPG is coming out. We have Dragon Quest coming out. There's Octopath Traveler. I think one of those will probably get my top pick for RPGs of this year. But so far, Nino Kuni 2 is my number one. Like I've called it Chicken Soup for the Soul. It's just a really uplifting story. Of course, someone dies in the very beginning. But it's just like a Disney movie. Something bad has to happen at least happens. once. And then it's all sunshine and rainbows. Um, and they did really cool things with the um, kingdom building that you could do and the characters got really interesting and it took took me a very long time but I was very interested up to the very end there is still story DLC coming which I think should have been included in the main game and then maybe I would have liked the game a little bit more I would like the game to come to my switch kingdom come deliverance was also an awesome game I know I talked about it on the show a lot and I praised it quite a bit but the problem was as they were as warhorse was implementing um patches it would break the game a little further in different ways oh and no. so it eventually got to the point where i couldn't even fast travel without my game crashing and because of their Christ. wonky save system you could only save and quit you couldn't save on the fly unless you yeah that sounds it. like a hard no potions yeah um i eventually just had to stop playing it because it was crashing so much and by the time they put in new patches to supposedly fix the crashing i just got done playing god of war and then I try to hop back. It's hard into to go it. back. It was it was hard to go back into it. Um, I think it was still. I still think it's a great game and it's very impressive for being what it is from the studio. I hope they continue to improve on this and make better games like this in the future because I think they're very talented. But I, I it's gonna Just have to be a hot not minute in the, before I, in the bug department. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stop you here for a second because. Yeah. I don't want to devolve into individual categories because the whole idea of this was game of the year so far. Are any of those like an actual like, could they make the top five nominees for for game of the year? Yeah. Nino Kuni too could. Okay, great. Yeah. So that is on the list. It's on the list. Kingdom Come Deliverance though. It can't. It's way too broken. Way too broken. We're kicking it out of this fucking conversation. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's out. Um, Steimer. Mm Mm-hmm. Britt just said her first nominee for Game of the Year. Sure. Nino Cooney 2. I already said mine, too. Which is... God of War. God of War. Let's talk about God of War. God so of War. So this, I feel like, is the Game of the Year so far pick for the vast majority of people I know that work in the video games media business. And for a lot of you out there who have been posting in the What's Good Games fan page on Facebook or leaving us comments on the YouTube videos, it seems like this was like the one game that has really ignited a bunch of people if you have a PlayStation 4. Of course, people who play on Xbox or PC or only on Nintendo Switch, for example, maybe haven't gotten a chance to play that. And to that, I say, that's tragic because this game is real good. So what about this game for you was like immediately you were like this is game of the year i wasn't an immediate 
person on because yeah, i remember yeah. when you first started playing you were like eh, it's good you were sick though yeah you were very i was sick. very ill but I'll, but also no i would argue that the beginning of the game it's not super slow it's not tragically slow but it is a little bit slower and like as it starts to ramp in terms of story and direction um i became more and more interested in it because it became more about uh the way kratos develops as a human well he's not a human as a as a god <laughs> god man demigod with, with, with human qualities um and you know and the relationships and everything i just felt like it was really the the pacing of it um once you get a few hours in kicks in and it, and it becomes really good uh so there's that obviously the game is beautiful um the scale of it i like how they played with scale because one of the things in past god of war games granted I will happily say I watched Greg play those. I did not play them myself. Mm-hmm. Um, was the scale that they had with a lot of like the Titans or um, you, mm. whenever you're like these battles against these really large creatures. And there weren't a ton of those in this one, but they still kept it there in the environment and like things that were happening, whether it be the world serpent, that's just kind of chilling. Mm-hmm. You're like, that so, thing is massive. Yeah. Like, just like you feel like little, little baby, baby. And then the uh, there's another thing that's also it's not yes. alive, but it's there. Uh, <laughs> I'm like trying to be really big, just in case you didn't play. Another thing that's not alive but is there. Sorry, that was really stupid and really vague. Uh, the body of I'll just it's not like a spo- story spoiler. Oh, like yeah, the body no. of the giant that you Thal- kind of like. Thalmor. Thalmor. I don't know. Yeah, his his corpse. That's not a spoiler. It's he's not. Part, he's part of the map. He is part of the map, but only once you get to that, get to that <laughs> point. I don't know. I'm being very sensitive because well, I don't want to. Well, like most, like most um, games that have open world elements, um, the map only reveals itself once you venture go into there. that once you go to the there. Map, which was really interesting in God of War because there was all like this tiny little section that I didn't reveal because I didn't go in the right cavern entrance and mm-hmm. I didn't know that there was like another little area down there. And so when I got to the end of the game and I was looking at my completion list as a, to what I missed, I was like, where, where is that? And I had to really kind of like study a, a map online with like a fine tooth comb to be like, oh, I, that part isn't on my map. So then I went back and looked for it. Um, I'm with you, Snymer. This is definitely my game of the year so far as well. And what I really love about it and what really kind of grabbed me was not only did it look beautiful from the get-go, and animation is such a huge part of the immersion in a video game for me, but it just flowed so perfectly, and it just felt really seamless. And so many games um, show their uh, their flaws, and not that it always brings you out of the experience or it, it kind of like brings you out of the immersion, but a lot of the times it does. Like if there's like a, a broken piece of animation or if like there's some bad writing or if there's a combat encounter that just doesn't feel good. But I felt like every time I was playing, I picked up the controller to play God of War. I just, I always wanted to just keep playing because it flowed from like a puzzle into an exploration into like a mini boss fight. And then you got into this really cool long cutscene, and it never felt like I was wanting something to be over or I was craving something. It was giving me just the right amount of everything I was looking for in that moment. And that's so hard to master. Yeah. And I also think like, um, length wise for me, Grant, I did not do the two optional areas. Um, and I felt like that felt really good. It felt good to skip those, to be quite mm-hmm. honest with you. Like it felt like, yes, this was the amount of content that should be in this game. I didn't, cause then it meant I wasn't fatigued out on anything. And I was just like kind of flowing through and feeling really good about my yeah, experience it's interesting how for you it started out slow because for me when i started god of war i had one of these moments that i don't know if i've ever had in game where it was like within the first five minutes i was i i teared up and it's like this is going to be a masterpiece and i don't know why i thought that obviously like in hindsight that's foolish because you can never really tell yeah you know by like the opening cinematics but for some reason i was just like oh my god this is gonna be because i didn't care about kratos before this no i thought he had I. an interesting story but Same. the way it was able the way the game was able to keep me hooked and keep me invested. I felt like that game didn't have any fat on it. And there were the optional areas that, you know, you might consider fat, but everything the game offered, I wanted to experience like those Valkyrie fights. There is one that I spent probably 55 to 60 times trying to fight. And that is not me at all in games. I get so frustrated. I just walk away. I'll nope out yeah with optional stuff that doesn't intrigue me but i wanted to get a taste of everything at least once and it's really hard for a game to pull me in so much that i'm like i want to do everything you're offering 
I got scared of the Valkyries. I walked away. Yeah, they're they're they are pretty intimidating. <laughs> I didn't do any of those. They I was like, uh, you seem real tough. I just go over you, here now. <laughs> yeah, they were. So I still. That's like the last thing I have to do in my game is to finish the Queen of the Valkyries fight. And oh, is that all? <laughs> the only the hardest fight in the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like okay. So that's. I, what I said is not true. There are still some of the stuff in Niflheim that I have to do, like to collect the mist echoes to open a few of the remaining chests. But like the thing is, is like that just feels like grindy, grindy, busy work for me. And I know that I've done a bunch of it, and like the getting all that stuff really helps to do the Queen of the Valkyrie fight. But I, this is like the if I'm gonna make like one gripe about this game, it's like the mechanic of introducing high level armor or gear or a high level move set or special power whatever to do one final fight at the at the end of the game and then you never use it again is so silly to me i don't understand why like infamous second son like stands out to me as like a game that this occurred and then you learned like one power going into the final boss oh yes yeah you're like concrete all of a sudden yeah exactly and i was like wait no okay so I'm like, why am I doing <laughs> all I of this grinding? The game's over. Yeah, exactly. And so I was like, I didn't even get to learn how to use the concrete. And then yeah. anyway, this is, we don't want to get into the <laughs> just a second sun. But that was like the one thing about this game that I was like, you know what? I don't need to go back and finish this because like what? I'm going to grind. Mm-hmm. I know like for people who really love the game, who want the game to keep going, they're like, oh, I did because I just wanted to do it. And it was fun. And it was yeah, I think that's more of game. what that was versus yeah. second sun where it really was kind of like what like yeah. here's yes. this power and you can only really use this if you just didn't finish a bunch of the side things and got kicked back into the map after True. the story was over but by that point i'd finished everything because i really liked that game yeah yeah um andrea do you have a pick i Are do you- so monster hunter world is yeah. definitely a contender for me and i never would have thought i would have said that no, this yeah, time last year very surprising you know after this after this game was announced i was like cool a monster hunter game not gonna play that because monster hunter's not for me because uh, i played monster hunter 3 on nintendo 3ds and it was just so difficult i mean and that it was a very deep experience that has so many systems and so many layers of RPG and combat mechanics that you have to spend but 20 30 hours just kind of getting your feet wet and to me like that's just so much of a commitment to just learn the systems but I stuck with it with Monster Hunter World because they made it so much more approachable this time around and while there still were a bunch of systems and I don't know what half of them do (laughs) to this day I look at my inventory full of all of these different types of collectibles for crafting and things like that. And I only ended up using one set of weapons. Like I started out with the dual blades and then I went to light bow gun and never looked back. Mm. And I could just continue to craft light bow guns all the way up until I finished the campaign of like 75 hours in. And then I was like, well, there's like so many more, almost a dozen more types of weapons that I could go back and it would maybe really change my experience. But the idea of like starting from the bottom and working my way Started up the, the weapon chain again, yeah. like literally starting Do from the bottom. Do you see yourself going back to Monster Hunter World? You know, I was talking to Greg and Kevin about this on a, a kind of funny because they both played a lot and I played a lot with them, not only just the What's Good Games squad, but also with the kind of funny squad because... Uh, every once in a while, I was able to get people that would drop into my game and help me complete some some quests and things like that. I would if the online matchmaking system was a little bit friendlier to mm-hmm. use. Mm-hmm. And I wish that you could see your character with your friend's characters running around like the hub city. Yes. That to me was like such a bummer because like in Destiny, when you group up with people in your fire team, you can all like go to the tower together and check out each other's armor and Play look soccer. at your weapons and like, you know, just have that interaction or have like a little dance party. Mm. Right. And so and in Monster Hunter, you can only do that if you coordinate it essentially outside of the game, because then you all have to go to the gathering hub at the same time. And in order to get there, you either have to be very good about using the in-game text chat, which I know is an option, but I feel like every time I tried to use in-game text chat to get people to go to the gathering hub, like no one would ever read it or listen to me. And so then I would just be up there by myself being like, cool, I'm just going to go to gather. on the mission Let now. Let me gather. Yeah. So like the, the posting of the quests on the boards and that, that whole system is just wasn't ideal. Not that it wasn't unworkable, obviously, but 
that was something that I wish that they would have optimized post launch a little bit more and they really haven't but they've added you know some good content that I haven't gotten to check out yet but I really liked the game because I think it brought a very traditional Japanese you know action RPG to a new audience people like me who would have never picked that game up and mm -hmm. paid for that game and now I'm like that game is awesome and yeah. I love that game so I was really happy it was interesting because it, obviously they have announced a new Monster Hunter well it's not really new this is another game coming to the west um that's coming to switch because everyone's like oh you're bringing Monster Hunter World oh, right. to switch and Capcom was like that game can't run oh, on switch yeah <laughs> I mean we'll it barely ran new. on the Xbox I had yeah, well... I think that was because the Xbox was I broken. I think that was an Xbox thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that was a Monster Hunter issue. I didn't actually try it again. What? On your new Xbox? On my new Xbox. Because I, I, I sw oh. switched it out. But I can't remember if I tried it. I don't know. You should try. I should try it. Could but I, I, have, I have not yet. Again, now that the behemoth of Persona 5 is finally behind the me, I feel, like, I feel like there are so many things I can do the now. World. You can see the world now, Steimer. That's where I... I I want to play Nino Kuni, but I don't think I can do it right now because af after just finishing a massive JRPG, I don't know that I want to jump right back into another one. Yeah, and I mean Nino Kuni too. It does things a little different than that. Like it's not turn-based combat. For I example. just mean lengthwise, knowing uh, just, that like just seeing like having starting something that I know is going to be that long of a journey. Yeah. I think mentally, I just yeah, can't do. Yeah, it's interesting because it took me like I don't know, like eighty something hours, but some people finish it in thirty. Which is still a oh long time. really? Yeah, I think it depends on how many quests you want to do, how involved you want to get in the kingdom. That building. makes me happy. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not a huge undertaking. Okay, that's yeah, because I'm like I can't do another hundred hour RPG right now. Yeah, that would just it would break. I you. would yeah. It would break <laughs> That'd be you. Okay, but I am looking forward to Octopath Traveler. <gasps> yeah, that's what's hard right now is, I mean, like some of my other okay, I've played a lot of games this year that I have enjoyed thoroughly. But as far as game of the year contenders, uh, yeah, the it, it's hard to, to, yeah. Like I would for personally, I would love to say West of Loathing, but that game can't be considered you know, according to the what's good games rules, official rule. Book. I mean, that doesn't have to be the rule. It was just no, the thing no, I was fine. throwing just, out I'm there, putting shit out there. Um, I would say another contender for me this year would be Detroit become human. Yep. Like we talked about this on our spoiler spoiler cast last week with Greg. Granted, it has some narrative issues. Some of the things it does don't make a lot of sense. Sure. But I just thought the way it makes you think. Yeah, the way it makes you think and the amount of stress and anxiety it gave me. I'm like, holy crap, I've never yeah. felt this before in a game. And it's just so pretty to look at those facial animations. And it's just gorgeous on a PS4 Pro. And I was super duper into it the whole way through. And I liked how you would... Because, you know, like we talked about, this could be a future for us. You know, this yeah. could be what's going on. And there are all those, que those questions, you know, what are, how are you going to handle professional athletes? You know, what about people who ditch their relationships with real humans to pursue relationships with androids or robots? And how is that going to play out? And I think this just kind of sheds a very interesting and plausible light on that future. And it does make you think. And it makes you stress out. And yeah. I, yeah go oh, so go ahead. No, I was going to say, the, I mean, the the main thing that I love about Quantic Dreams games are is also just the variety of different ways the story can end. Um, so I only played through it once because I'm a cheater. Not a cheater, but it's like you're supposed to play these types of games multiple times where I'm like, this is... I'm not going to. But it's, it's fun to talk. Normally I do that. Like yeah. in Mass Effect, for example, I would make saves right before mm -hmm. like big conversations. And yeah. then if it didn't go my way, I would definitely load in and redo it. And I called Brittany a cheater for doing that this way because you kind of had to cheese the game to do that in Detroit, right? Yeah, and you can call it cheating. You can call it whatever you want. But I knew... <laughs> this is my problem with these kind of games is my number... My first playthrough is going to be my playthrough and that's going to be my experience. And if I were to watch things on youtube it just doesn't resonate with me it doesn't feel like it was my experience and so i have to play games like this no i understand i understand what you're saying uh, and i'm a similar way however going into this game i was like i played it i put it on the whatever difficulty where it was like you're it's a little harder than norm harder quote unquote yeah. aka i think it's just you have the less quick time, time events puzzles yeah the quick time, time events and stuff are, are a little bit more intense and I put it on that because I was like, I really want to feel like what I'm doing is impactful. I want to feel like if I messed up, I messed up and like that care, I have to live with those choices. So as I, and I'm not going to say the spoiler, but in the spoiler cast, I talk about some of those decisions that like just, it was a split second and I kind of feel like terrible about those. And I, <laughs> I you know, it's not like a happy, fuzzy feeling, but mm -hmm. that's 
the, that is my world of Detroit. Right. Like, I just have to, I'm like, I just have to deal with that. No, that makes total sense. It's so funny because I'm just so com- opposite. I put it on the easier mode. I'm like, because I don't want to have a stressful time. I want to, I want to, I want everyone to live and be happy. And so when I play games like this, if I don't achieve that, it fucks me up, man. But yeah. I wish, I wish I could play the game more. I mean, I can, nothing's physically stopping me like you, because I know that's the way the game is intended to be played. But honestly, I, I was much more like you. It was, this was a long time. Like when there was heavy, heavy rain mm-hmm. and, um, what's the other one? Beyond two souls. Mm-hmm. It was actually Greg watching Greg play those and the way he, cause he's very much like, no, this is my playthrough. Mm-hmm. And like, this is how I do it. And I was more like you. And I was like, I can't do that. And then I was like, well, maybe I can. Yeah. And so slowly over time, I've become a little better about it. I still have a lot of anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, um, okay, it's fine. just keep going. Like you just, I have to force myself to continue through yeah. and it's not just- stop and go back. It's interesting you hear hearing you talk about like your anxiety making these choices because there was one choice in particular in Detroit that I remember coming up super quickly and like you had to like hit your button like really promptly and like at first I was mad because I was like this is a game they shouldn't make me have to choose so quick I should be able to read the things and then afterwards I was like I had like this epiphany moment where I was like but wait that's the way it is in real life. Sometimes you get into these really heated conversations with people Mm -hmm. and you only have a split second to think about and then say what you're going to say. And we've all been in a situation where we've said the wrong thing. Yep. If you're me, you say the wrong thing a lot. (laughs) And it just, it kind of dawned on me, like maybe that's what he's obviously trying to go for here with this is like trying to replicate this idea that in human interaction, you a lot of times are forced to speak without no perfect thinking way. or mm-hmm. you just got to like go with the go with the first thing that comes to your mind and it's either going to be the right thing to say or it's fucking not <laughs> you know yep. yeah. and it was it was crazy how they were able to capture that in such a in such a humane way yeah absolutely the thing about video games you save and exit or you don't save you actually you just exit you reboot it up you can make that decision yeah but you can't right do that in real life, you can do it Brittany, in games, man. You, know, you can't. I mean, you just gotta walk it back in real life. You're like, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. I don't have that option to try. I'm sorry, sir, that I shot you in the back. No, I, I mean, there were yeah, there was definitely a couple times where again, it was it was like you were saying, like things were just happening really fast. Yeah. And I found my. And this is what I I found about myself that I was a little concerned by. I was more of a shoot first and like talk later type. You know, not to get off, but on, get off on separate whatever. I am playing vampire right now and I'm, I'm an asshole and I don't care. I don't, I, it's weird. I don't know what it was oh, about Detroit and vampire. Maybe it's the setting. Do you feel like mood. you're playing a character more versus yes, being you? Yes. I feel like I'm playing a character more. And I, for some reason in Detroit, I felt like more, I was those characters. Yeah. Hmm. And so I'm a vampire. I'm like, I mean, I think you, I'm you were, they did a good job of making you feel very empathetic towards the characters in Detroit. Yeah. Um, especially, uh, especially those facial Kara and thing. like the, you know, the kid yeah. and, I, you do there is something genuinely likable about connor it might just be his face i don't know like he just has like a really like sweet sort of face mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and then uh wow i'm blanking on the last one what's wrong with marcus, marcus. um i think just the way they did his storyline and how where he comes from and and how what everything he goes through is designed to just make you feel connected they, so they did a really good job making you connect to those characters yeah it's a good game mm-hmm. go play it mm-hmm um, a lot of people are talking about Celeste being a game of the year contender. Yeah. I need to put it on baby ass baby mode for myself, but I really liked where it was going narrative wise. It's just for me, the stress of trying to play that game was a bit too much. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know about the assist diff- mode. I didn't know about the assist mode when I started playing it. Yeah. I it's one of those games that I know that I need to go back to before we actually get to the end of the year. Yep. And I said this at, right after it came out. I was like, it's not grabbing me right now. And I just am not like that into this style of game. And I've had so many people try to convince me that like the story in it is worth it alone. So I think I'm with you. But something about it just isn't like isn't drawing me in. See, I was really intrigued by it. The thing that pulled me out was I don't know that I, I was like I don't know that I can play this game just like I don't have the that twitch level the skill reflexes. yeah I just don't have the dexterity for this game um and then when I was talking to you guys and you're like no there's like ways to make it way easier I'm like oh yeah. oh 
Okay. That's also something I'm learning. Like, uh, over the past, I would just say year, I think, I guess like as I've done this podcast mm-hmm. with you guys, I've become better about being like, okay, I can just put this on easy and go. Baby yes, I used baby to be mode. much more of like, no, no, I'm going to at least play this game on normal or I'm not going to play it at all. Oh. And <laughs> like, yeah, or I'm just going to like nope out. The one exception being Catherine when I tried playing that game on easy and it was still really hard. <laughs> No, I, I hear you. I used to be that way, too. I used to have a sense of pride. Like, yeah. I'm going to play Call of Duty. Now, I, shooters, my worst genre. I'm so bad at them. I play a Call of Duty game on normal. I'm going to die a lot. But I was like, and this was in 2009, 2010. I'm like, I'm a female gamer, and I have to represent, and I have to play shooters on normal or hard difficulty. So blah, 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 because I don't want people to question my My, my authenticity. authority. <laughs> yeah, 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 authenticity <laughs> as a gamer. But now it's like, I don't fucking care. I would come on a podcast and tell people I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. People are, people are so judgmental. Wow. Jeez. I just like, I think that's something so quintessential about the gaming community though. When you compare our hobby next to people who go to movies or watch TV or read books or listen to music, there's something about the technical skill. And I think Jared Petty was talking about this when he was on the show about how it's quantifiable. The, the, the skill in most of these video games um, from a very like basic numerics level. And that's that competitiveness and of that quantitative quality of the video games as a medium overall has really what kind of defines it and also sadly makes it highly competitive and why people are like, oh, you have to play it this specific way or it was designed to be played this way or if you don't play it this way, you're not playing it right. Mm -hmm. And that kind of bothers me. I like, I understand that line of thinking and where it comes from, but I think we're entering this age of inclusivity, which is fantastic that more and more developers are thinking about how to be as inclusive as possible with their game making styles. And that I want, I would like <laughs> more people <laughs> to be more open-minded about people playing games in the way that suits them. So like if I want to play a game on the easiest difficulty, because it allows me to, get through the hard combat encounters more quickly so I can get to the narrative elements. Why is that? Why is that a problem for somebody? Especially if I'm playing it by myself. Yeah. Right. No, no, usually things when you're not, don't know. Well, maybe they do. Well, like for me, you know, I can talk to you until the end of time about story and character development and how a game flows and blah, blah, blah. But just because I can't tell you how, and I can talk to you about the combat and how I found it, but I can't talk to you specifically just about the difficulty of a game. Yeah. And because I cannot talk to you about the specific difficulty of a game, that does not mean that all of my other opinions about the story, character, flow, whatever, are invalid. And that's why I tell people. And they're like, oh, yeah, I guess, that, I guess that's a good point. It's like, yes, sir. It is. Ma'am. It is. Dog, cat. It is. So I'm looking through my other games that I played this year, and I've enjoyed them, but I can't call them game of the year contenders right i kind of feel like it's slim pickings which is which is interesting um so we i I do want to just give a shout out to a couple of our dear wg uh dear wgg patrons who have written in questions for the podcast um just because we kind of glossed over these, but Devin wrote and said, Hey ladies for game of the year so far, wanted to ask what your favorite indie games have been. Celeste stole my heart earlier this year and holds the indie game of the year for me personally, but I'd love to know if you have any picks as always love the content. What do you three do? Um, and then somebody else also wrote in about indie games, Mitch, any games similar or smaller scale that the discussion will likely be around, um, for indie of the year so far and he mentions a game called rainbow skies oh yeah and that's the top list of his personally so is there an indie game on your list that you've played brit that you're like this game really stood out for me besides uh well you were talking about west of loathing earlier so i played a lot of indie games on the switch and i didn't know this but a lot of them had already come out years prior so just going through for example um burly man at sea old man's story i think is one of them um florence i thought was pretty oh, freaking incredible florence, florence yeah. yeah west of loathing i mean um the dark side detective but i think that was actually last year that was actually a last year game night in the woods would also last be up game. there for well it came to switch february 2018 but it released originally february 2017 so that's like as far as indie games that came out this year this well i year, think florence is a good call out yeah florence, florence, is a, florence yeah I that game is, 
was really, really beautifully done in the way that they tied their narrative to the mechanics of the game as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, so we had Alana Pierce on the episode when we were doing our, our mini spoiler cast because the game is so short, it was really impossible for us to talk about the game yeah. without um, spoiling it because it's just all narrative. I think even though it was incredibly short, it was so impactful that it didn't matter. And yep. I think that, you know, it's, t- what, two ninety nine. I think was the price in, in, in the yeah, app store. Yeah, it's not expensive. Um, and I just love how they didn't feel the need to port traditional control inputs onto mobile. And we see so much of that happening in mm-hmm. mobile. I really love when a developer takes their content and, go, and, and says, I'm, de- I, I'm developing this specifically for a touchscreen on the glass experience. You know, we saw that with Kids, which is being um, published by Double Fine, which we saw at Such a uh, Judges game. Week. I know, so weird. I can't wait to play that full thing. I think it's coming out later this summer. I have to double check the release date. But Florence, just like the music and like how it was just so, that story, I think it was just so relatable for everybody. Everybody mm-hmm. was able to find part of that narrative that they were like, yeah, I've been through this. Yeah, absolutely. The one unrelatable part was I was like, I've never met anybody this quickly. Like, like she like runs into him on the street and then it's like, we're dating. I'm like, does this happen for people? <laughs> I, that's never happened to me. Yeah, I know. It happened exactly that way either. It was more of the other stuff that I was able to relate. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was part where I was like, yeah. That's nope, a little. Uh, this never happened. But the rest, yes. <laughs> um, I want to say this year I've been getting into more tower defense games, which is new mm, for me. Yay, I've played tower defense. I've always enjoyed them, but I just haven't ever sat down to play them for yeah. some reason. Yeah. So Pixel Junk Monsters 2, and these all have co ops. I've been loving them. And then Balloons 5 just came out on Switch. Balloons 5? Balloons. B L O O N S. Blue. Like balloons. Balloons. Balloon. 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 Like something you blow up with air. No, but it's a balloon. It, it's a it's a fun play on the word. Balloon. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, no, but that's not the same. Thing. I love Is you, it- Samer. I love how freaking like logical you are. You're like, <laughs> but, but there's sometimes some I here. feel like does not commu- <laughs> but does video not game like games Spock are never or logical. Some shit where I'm yeah. like, um, this how, does not wait. How do you spell for it? B L L. Oh, it's not B L O O N S. B L myself. O O N S T D five. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it popped so up right away. This actually, I think, came out. Um, a long time ago. Oh, this is really cute. Like December two- 2011. Right, but it just came to Switch. And so Bloons and Pixel Jug Monsters 2 are really fun tower defense games, both on the Switch. They both have local co-op and I think online as well. And so it's really fun to strategize with friends or your husband and figure out strategies. I also played a game called Aegis Defenders, which is a fun play on tower defense slash RPG slash platforming. Um, Wait, what's it called? Aegis Defender. Okay, I say Aegis because that's how they say it in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. A E G I S. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sure people I out there are Aegis, like, it's, it's but Aegis. I don't, know, I, don't, is, I don't know if it's that's. It's Aegis. And I did, or Aegis, but I say Aegis because, like, in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Got it. She even calls herself the Aegis. Don't fight me. Um, that one was fun too, but the problem with that one was the graphic style was very, it was kind of like 8-bit, which is, is fine, but correct on... Correct, is Aegis. Aegis. It, it is a word of Greek origin and is pronounced Aegis. Oh. Boom, shakalaka. Not Aegis. Okay. Boom, shaka for I don't know Greek, so, you know, I'll I defer know to either. you, Google. Anyway, Aegis Defenders also on the Switch came out February 2018. I think it's a game for a lot of people. Like I said, tower defense, RPGs, and platforming, co-op play as well, but the graphics in general, I'm one who likes like the 8 bits shenanigans yeah uh it was just too hard to follow on screen mm. but, you know like the characters needed like a black outline or something and for me i just couldn't play it as well but fair enough yeah so tower defense making making a comeback in brit's life in 2018 we, we need just- to play monsters still we haven't done that yet let's do it did you accept my friend request on playstation i uh playstation probably not did we have this fight Wait. We did, and I tried to log into the app, but my app wasn't working, or it was it needed to be updated. I tried to do it like I always story. check. I check almost every time I log onto my PlayStation. God damn! To see it's whether like or not shit. Brittany is my friend, and every time, <laughs> oh, God, it she hurts is my not. heart. We're gonna fix it immediately when we're done recording this episode. Hey, it's going to happen. It's fine. Um, I have another question mm-hmm. from Dear WGG, and this one is one we're gonna probably have to like dig deep into our brains to make Uh-oh. sure we got this oh, okay man. matt a plays asks how is everyone doing on their gaming resolutions i know i've definitely fallen behind on trying to finish one game every month so if you guys don't remember back in january i don't remember my resolution we did a, I remember yours. a gaming resolutions I for mine. the year of 2018 and i definitely i love that you remember the mine, mine but you don't remember yours so Simon, yours was to say it's okay to put down a game and stop playing it or was that mine 
No, I, that was definitely me. Okay. I think there was that, and I was also like, I don't want to play games as you much. You like, certainly did instrument. that. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've done a lot of other things outside of, you know, I read a lot more now. I have I do adult coloring. Not like sexual coloring, but just like adult coloring books, which are more complicated than children's coloring books, Ooh. in case you didn't know. Um, you know, I try or like listen to podcasts. Like, I'll, I'm trying to do more things, and that yeah. I'm definitely succeeding on that also that does mean though that i'm you know not playing as many games but i don't know what mine was but i wonder if it had something to do with playing more indies maybe maybe not because I, I did really good at that this year thanks to the nintendo freaking switch yeah this is a noble thing let me look this up i am um, so mine was uh, to finish two games a month every month that was a very aggressive year. goal so especially since so many games are so long now Yep. So in January, I finished Assassin's Creed Origins, like rolled credits. Yep. Also, like, is there like a movement against that phrase? I've seen this online a couple what of phrase? times. Rolled credits. But here's why I, I disagree with the backlash behind it. Because some games have a fake end and then it's not, but you don't see the credits yet because it's not the real ending. And then you continue on and then the credits actually roll. That's when the game is actually finally done. Right. Let people do what they want to do. Let them, unless it's, if it's Does not it, it, you, Yeah, also, like, why would it bother down. you that much? Like, I wish someday in my life I could concern myself with something as trivial as that. That's all I'm just throwing out there. Anyways, anyway, that's the fine. reasoning behind why I have sometimes said roll credits is that. I think it's fine. It's because there's a ending that is not the ending. There's a lot worse things you could say. And you got to go do the other thing. And then the game actually ends. Do we count expansions as a finished game? I was actually about to bring up expansions because I know that Destiny's got one coming out this fall and I wasn't sure if you were going to want to start talking about it for Game of the Year stuff. I mean, probably, but it's tough because, I mean, even for, for the Game Awards and the Game Critics Awards, uh, there's a special category now for ongoing content because mm. so many games are transitioning to games as services, but they're still putting out these crazy content packs. So I think we should we could do a, something like that then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, I'm highly anticipating it being fantastic. But oh no, I'm yeah. I'm not saying we're like we'll yeah. automatically give this. I'm just saying I think it's something we should consider, um, since a lot of games do continue. They are games as service, as you said. Yeah. I've been trying to go through our old show notes and see if I can find the episode where we talked about resolutions. But to wasn't no it avail. in January? I'm looking. It I'm was. looking at yeah. Let's let's let me let me Google this really quick. Was it a show or was it a Patreon video? I feel like it was a show i don't remember everything has blurred together in my brain it's all soup up there here i got it what's good quick. clips oh who clipped that oh that would be hey. you a, a really pretty blonde girl i know wow it's taken from the third segment of episode 34 damn okay wow also steimer's lip game on point in this oh episode. that was my real dark lipstick my real emo lipstick Mm. anyways <laughs> yeah anyway it was dinner. interesting because some of the one of the first comments is my goal is a mix of andrea's and steimer's i want to finish more games and also spend more time on my other hobbies well good luck with that <laughs> yeah i mean it's hard you you really do have to just try and prioritize as best you can um and i think i need to i think i need to use my switch more to help me play more games because yeah i find because that, that way, if I'm like, I want to watch like TV, but I also want to pl be playing something, I could play something like Pixel Drunk Monsters, which is mostly tower defense, mm -hmm. and like be doing that while 30 Rock is playing for the umpteenth time on my television. Yeah. No, the Switch is fantastic for that and <gasps> turning me on to games that I never otherwise, like Burly Man at Sea, an old man story. And I just recently started a game I'll talk about in an upcoming episode called Angels of Death, which you're like a Ooh. third. Yeah, it's a Switch game. I like the names. It, yeah, you're this 13-year-old girl who wakes up in like a six-level hospital. That there's six floors to it. Sure. And you don't know how you got there. All you knew is that you were at your therapy session because you saw someone die in front of you. So you're getting therapy because of it. It kind of reminds me of Corpse Party, that game I talked about a while ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's really okay. weird, really strange. There are people trying to kill you. It's not a happy, like, feel good people game. People in the hospital but are trying so to kill you? But it's so interesting. Huh? People in a hospital are trying to yeah, kill you? Yeah, there's one person per floor who's always trying to kill you, and there's always, like, a shtick with them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but, like, that's what I love about what the Switch. What a terrifying it's just, like, hospital. <laughs> perfect, like, pick up, find a random game that you never otherwise would have played. Yeah. And it's, it's just perfect for that. It's so strange. I don't know if I've finished two games in a single month so far. 
I finished at least one game every month this year. So I'm definitely behind. I, d- I did it one month because I played finished Far Cry and God of War very, very close together. What about Detroit? Oh, yeah, God of War. I didn't even write that down. Crazy you me. Did, you, should, you should have done this at least once. Because if I did it once. Yeah, because Flor- <laughs> didn't Florence come out in April as well? My slow ass managed to. Yeah, Flor- I mean, Florence is like... Hey, it still counts. A drop in the bucket. But yes, it does. You can count whatever you want to count, baby girl. You take it. <laughs> Hey, you know what? <laughs> Whatever matter. makes you sleep better at night. I still want to know what my fucking resolution was. Um, it came out in February. Florence. Yeah. 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 Do you want to? Do, do you want me to pull up the video for it? Kind of. Yeah, but then we have to watch it. Well, ladies can... and gentlemen, we're going to just have to scrub, scrub through this video I don't right now. No scrubs. Scrub is a guy. Maybe it was also the same as your assignment. Yeah, I think that maybe. I can just quit my game if I'm not having fun with it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Why didn't we write these down? You yeah, we, we don't think about things. All right, if you more than ladies and gentlemen know <laughs> what our my resolution was, let me know and I'll I'll keep you posted. We on can that. figure that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, later. But have you stopped a game yet and stopped like been like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. come deliverance. Xenoblade Chronicles two. Oh, and that I was uh, like eighty five to ninety hours into that game, and then I was like, it lost me, and I just stopped. I enjoy. It. I'm learning to appreciate the time I spent with the game, and I did have I did derive enjoyment out of it, which is wonderful. But then it's like if it doesn't hold you anymore. That Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah. Um, th- yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. I yeah. think it's it's healthy to let things go sometimes. I think I've actually done the opposite. And I, I forced myself to power through some things. Um, but I, it's because I did want to play them and be able to talk about them. Sure. So like Far Cry. Yeah. If I didn't want to talk about the story as a whole, I would have dropped that game and not walked back. Like not looked back. Because yeah. I left the like most infuriating section for the end. Oh, that's <laughs> With that stupid plain boss oh, battle. And I was like, worst boss battle. Why is this a thing? Please never do this again. No vehicle boss battles. Anybody, please no. Stop it. Just stop. Just yeah, know. I had a lot of fun with that game. The co-op was great. You know, the the first like I think part if I played it, with somebody, maybe it would have been more yeah, fun. But I played I mean, alone. No, but for me too. At the end, I just completely on the third final region. I was like, I don't want to do any of the side quests. I just want to get enough to to finish the game. Which is interesting because when I talked about it on the show, I think Andrew and I were at a preview event and I talked about the testy festy and how yep. we like flew in an airplane and it was so much fun. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know if we just saw a part of the game that was just like super, well, oh my God, like dense and jam packed with awesome. I mean, I don't know. I did. Enjoy I think it's more when you, you fatigue out of the I think, things. Yeah, yeah. I think at, that's what at it a is. certain level. Um, but I had a great time with it. But the story just kind of, you know, it just. It was a it was a fine game, as Steimer would say. Yes, a fine game. It was a fine game. Definitely not a game of the year contender for Especially me. Especially if you, yeah, if you have someone to play cob with, I'm sure it's like even more fun. Yeah. But uh, there was definitely a certain point where I'm like, all these enemies are the same, and they like never change. And fucking turkeys just, trying to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. There's only so much of it mm. I I personally want to do before I, I'm like, okay, I can be done with this. Another game I want to hop back into now that it's been fixed quotes uh state of decay 2 because obviously it's selling oh really did well. they have um did they put out some updates for it yeah they yeah. put out a new patch and then they have a new pa- piece of dlc that came out for independence day where you can get like um fireworks and stuff oh yes <laughs> why would you want fireworks wouldn't that attract zombies let me look exactly what this is technique ah oh yeah. you like shoot it off some or other you direction. light them and then you throw them yeah 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 like go over there fine go. oh revolutionary war themed zombies <laughs> what <laughs> where do they come from <laughs> the graves timer the graves well so yeah the independence pack came out this week and it's 4.99 and contains uh three new patriotic melee back. weapons uh three new vehicles the pyro hawk the burninator and the, the burninator meat- like trogdor i don't know and then i don't know what that is and the <gasps> meat wagon what? Meat wagon. You okay. don't know what trogdor is i don't know what sad. trogdor is uh, did i it's are you from- revoking my gamer card it's not a gaming thing. Oh. It's an old school. Uh, do you remember Homestar Runner? Did you ever watch Homestar Runner? No. Okay. I never. I mean, I okay. know of Homestar Runner. I never watched it. I dated a guy in college that watched way too much Homestar Runner. I watched a lot. I watched a lot of Strong Bad and Strong Bad had come up with this character called Trogdor the Burninator and he was a dragon man and he went around destroying the countryside with his burninating fire. <laughs> 
That sounds right. I love you, Sam. Oh, and so the fireworks, they have the block rocker, the Rhino fire, bouncing Boris, and the XL firework shell <laughs> offer more options to turn a mission into a celebration. There we go. But can we co-op more easily? <laughs> You know what? They have said that they've patched some stuff. There's only one way to find out. We have to play together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know when we're going to do that. It's fine. But we're going to figure it out. Uh, ladies. Oh, something I actually want to play with you that could, you've already played, A Way Out. Yes. I, that's still a game that we should play. Yeah. I've heard good things about yeah. it. Yeah. And I've heard it's not incredibly long. It's not. That's what Which you is said. It's fine. What it's a fine I, game. I look for in a game <laughs> these days. <laughs> In my old age, I look for something that's not too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the entendre is Brittany is slapping that. Pounded that's what that she pillow. said. Pillow. All right, ladies, I think we're going to wrap this up because yeah. what's become apparent is that while there are some amazing games that have released this year, I feel like it's very weighted in the back half of the year. I mean, and traditionally, that's not yeah. surprising. But Although next year. I think this time next all February, year. February all the time. Uh, yeah. We're yeah. going to have a lot to discuss because everything is releasing oh in God. February. As long as nobody slips. Don't Even if they don't slip, slip, they've got until, what is this? June? End of June. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Um, but coming up this fall, as Britt already mentioned, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We have Spider-Man on PS4. Oh, yeah. We've got Call of Duty Black Ops 4. We have Battlefield 5. We have Brad Dodd. Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, Dragon Quest. What? Dragon Quest? Oh, yeah. Andrea's like, well. No, sure. <laughs> oh, man. I know that this is a game that Brit is really looking forward to. I don't. Here's my thing, though. I think that it'll 100% be in the RPG of the year contender. I don't think it's going to break through into the top overall game of the year conversation. Oh, no, absolutely no. not. Um. But let me just pull up this. I just had this this um, uh, game release list li up. Cause I feel like I'm missing something big. That is like a Red Dead Redemption? No, no I said Red no, Dead. I said okay. Red Dead. So I have Spider-Man, Call of Duty. Fallout 76. Ah, good old Bethesda. That's the one. And Smash Brothers. Smirsh. Smirsh. I feel like oh. because it's a fighting game, I don't know if it's going to have, Let's go. have the weight. No, that definitely won't no. be up for contention. <laughs> Don't be sad. You know it won't. I know. I know. I thought you were laughing. I've laughed crying. Oh, okay. So. No, I, I think Smash will be up. I mean, I I think it's gonna do good. It'll In do a well. year that we have Red Dead, Fallout, and God of War, and Spider Man. Yeah. All right. I, I don't. I, I'm just gonna go ahead and disagree with you. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You know what's oh, sad? Shit. Yeah. You know what's Creed. sad about that? Is that. What? I feel like no matter how good, like the, I think Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed are in the same boat. No matter how good those games are, for some reason, they just don't ever get nominated for anything. We also have Life is Strange too. Yes. Is that coming out this fall? September. Oh. Is the first episode. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that that's... It's, it's not, we don't no, know, we don't know the cadence of release. But I, I think, well, yeah, we're not going to get the Well, I mean, thing. it could be for an indie game. It could be for like Best Narrative or something yeah. like that. Spoiler cast. Do we, do we count that as an indie Yes. Mm. Yes. No. Maybe so. Mm. No, not they're published by. Well, yeah. well mm. mm. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Well, <laughs> I don't know if that's an indie game. You know what? I can call up my friends over at Square Enix and ask. And, ask like, and they're like, um, do, do you know who we are? As? One of the biggest bi video game publishers on the face of the earth. Um, that's a good question. So I'm not sure. It's going to be an interesting conversation. I think. I mean, without having played Red Dead and without having played. Spider-Man or Fallout. We I think Spider-Man. Oh, I mean, yes, we Sorry. played Spider-Man. We played, well, we played a little bit of Spider-Man. We played like 15 to 20 minutes of Spider-Man. Which fun. for like a giant open world action adventure it's, game is like you nothing. Get, no, you get a slice of that now. combat though and you're like, ooh, swinging around this city, boy. Yeah, I, I'm going to be shocked if that isn't in like the top five nominees for game of the year. Yeah. Like if I was going to pick who that category would include right now, it would be Spider-Man, Red Dead, God of War, um, Fallout, because I feel like Bethesda always gets nominated. Even though I don't know that, granted, again, haven't played this game. That's probably not one I would throw in there, just based on the premise. I just don't know. Because it's a I'm, prequel? No, because I'm skeptical that they can pull it off, that they can pull off a good online experience. Uh. 
I don't know. I feel like they can, and they're also doing a lot of work with Avalanche on Rage, and so I, I think that they've probably learned some open world tips and tricks. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I mean, I'm looking, the I'm looking isn't forward to trying this. with Avalanche. To be clear, yeah, I don't want you don't need to one. write me in the comments and be like, Excuse "Actually, me, it's um." But like, no, listen, I have to say that because somebody would, you know, they would. They're still going to, um, they <laughs> even probably though you said be like, that. Andrew, actually, I um, mean, actually, I don't have very good listening comprehension <laughs> skills. <laughs> I don't know who that fifth one would be. I think it's kind of a toss up. Yeah, anybody's game. I think I think uh, Tomb Raider is a contender, but we had to see it. Yeah, I think Smash is a I contender. Think, uh, yeah, I was gonna say I think yeah. Smash will be in there. I think I think Assassin's Creed is a contender. I have to see it. Oh, but here's the thing, contender. though, Brit. Smash oh, wait, is, is out too late out to be year? in Game of the or Year contention, particularly at least for the Game Awards. But like um, for our for our Game of the Year, yeah. But I mean, do you know us? I don't think we're. Gonna I don't be remember. No, so no, no. Here's the thing: uh, Smash won't be one of my Game of the Years unless they have some sort of like single player narrative. Even then, I don't think it will. I think for the millions and millions of Smash players out there, it's gonna be up there for them. Oh, never mind. That's next year. Well, I mean, there were also people that nominated PUBG for Game of the Year. Ooh. Oh, just kidding. Yeah. If you guys like Smash, that's totally fine. Um, I just like, I'm just not good at fighting games. I'm just but, yeah. saying that. But it doesn't mean you don't respect the, the game. True. Cl- the game? 100%. I got you, girl. 100% PR. true. And maybe I'll play Smash Ultimate and you guys can show me how to play. <gasps> yes. No. No. I mean, Steimer's just like, <laughs> no. I mean, it's just one of those games. I was talking to Jason last night and I was like, Smash is just one of those games. <laughs> Single tier from Where Brittany. I lose tracking of my character too easily. <laughs> There's too much happening. And so I kill myself more than anyone else you kills me in Smash. I just everyone, fall Steimer. off the world. By but over way. and over, and I'm just like, to me, there is no point in playing this game. This I'm just going to be like, wee! Hello, Abyss. How are Hello, you today? Hello, Abyss. My name is Simer. Here's my so, face. So, Brett, I will attempt to play Smash with you. Thank you, baby. Okay. I'll watch um, you guys. Okay, that sounds fun. I'll cheerlead. I really think, though, this is going to come down between Red Dead and God of War. Oh, me yes. too. I think Spider-Man's a solid three. Yeah. Unless, three. unless three. Spider-Man... Like comes out and like they are doing something so incredible narratively, but I think they're so locked to their license yeah. that they might have trouble with that. But who knows? We don't know. I trust Insomniac to do amazing things. I, yeah, but I yeah, think that's how we gotta wait to see. And I just feel like Red Dead. We just are locking in because every time Rockstar Rockstar releases something oh from their main studios, like it always wins everything. Absolutely. Oh, so that is true. <laughs> and from what I've heard from people who have seen it. It looks baller. I can't <gasps> believe people have seen it that aren't me. <laughs> I know. We got to call them up. I'm and real mad. Me, excuse Rockstar. me. Do you know who I am? Well, you- I mean, the game is coming out in October. It's almost done. It's going to be yeah. Red Dead, God of War, Spider-Man. Top cool. three? Top three. Yeah, I, th- I think so, too. I don't. Is there any site that ranks a top three? No. Well, no, but overall, because I think those are the three main contenders that everyone's big. Sure. Oh, gonna... And that's going to be it. That's fair. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh-huh. let us know what you think is your contender for game of the year. Did we miss something? Did you guys, were you screaming while you were listening or watching the show the whole time being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you forgot about this game. Let us know. Leave us a comment at youtube.com slash what's good games. Tweet to us at what's good underscore games. Write to us on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash what's good games. Or if you guys want to, you can also, you know, reach out to us individually. You can leave us a, uh, a review on your favorite podcast service. You could hit that subscribe button. All those things help us. Uh, once again, we want to give a big thank you and a shout out to Quip for sponsoring this episode. Again, if you guys are at a point where you can now write down that promo code or go check out their awesome electric toothbrushes, that's getquip.com slash what's goods. You can get your first refill pack for free. Again, getquip.com slash what's good. And as you guys have probably noticed, we didn't do any hands-on impressions. We didn't do any news and we didn't talk about the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit because next week is going to be the spoiler cast for the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. But as you guys know, it's going to be a little bit on the shorter side because it's a short experience. So if you haven't yet gotten a chance to play it, now is your warning. And uh, we will be back next week to talk about uh, some hopefully exciting video video games. games. More video games. Who would have thunk it? All the games all the time. What are you talking about? I think we should talk about food. We do that a lot. We do that a lot. Food sounds delicious. Speaking of food, let's get some food. Okay. All right. You guys have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week.